Hallelujah. Amen. Stand with me this morning. How many are free in Jesus today? Amen. Hallelujah. I am so glad that we are able to come together and worship Jesus. One prayer need that I wanted to mention, a a man by the name of Danny Allen, he was working on a roof and he fell off of that roof and uh, they're going to have to do a lot of work, broken a majority of his body. Father, touch Danny today in the name of Jesus. Bring healing to him right now in Christ's name. We thank you for it. Today I want to bring you a message that goes along with the Daniel dilemma and just want to say that we are going to meet again this Wednesday night and we're getting close toward no we're are we meeting this Wednesday night yes we are it's the following Wednesday night that we will not be meeting because of VBS but I just want you to know that uh, we're excited about what God is doing I hope that that this ministry is how many of you have attended on Wednesday nights and felt blessed by that amen God's working, and we just give Him praise for what He's doing. I want to bring you a message today based on that, the fact that Daniel was in a foreign country and God used him, and he was willing to be used by God, even if he was alone, to minister to five kings, and he made a difference where he was. We're going to talk about that today because we're going to talk about a New Testament parallel regarding an individual that God used. And we're going to talk about how God can use us to bring about great things for the kingdom. Here's where we are in Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse 10. Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse 10. The Bible says, and this is after Saul, a bright light came and he was blinded on Damascus Road. Saul was going to go persecute the believers there in Damascus, but he was arrested by God. He was blinded by that light. And here's how God intervened to minister to him. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. Say Ananias. And the Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying In a vision, he's seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I've heard a lot of reports about this man and all the harm he's done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with the authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord, say, but the Lord. But the Lord said to Ananias, Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell off of Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Today, I want to talk to you with just a simple message, and I really don't want to preach long today. The message is entitled, EMS. EMS. Father... Minister this word by your grace in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord Jesus today. We live in a Babylonian culture. It's intertwined in every area of our world. I know a lot of people are looking at America, but I want to tell you, I was talking to Pastor Shad before the service. I want you to know, we were talking about the whole world is in upheaval. There's an anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-unity, anti-moral existence that we see in our world today. 
And as we learned last week, the wise men of the world are not able to discern what God is saying. And God is saying our days are numbered. We've been weighed in the balances and we've been found wanting. Yet in the midst of this, I want to tell you, God is still at work. And I know that the media may not be reporting this. I was talking to Pastor Kidd. He said there's a move of God in Paraguay, but the media is not telling everybody about it. So God is at work. God is blessing His church to reach this culture. And we're going to do that. We're going to reach out to West Carter High School. We're going to reach out to the school here. We're going to reach out in our community because God has... And Pastor Shad says this to me many times, and I agree. We're not here on the corner of Country Club Road and Bridges Street Extension just to be a building. We are to be the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the impact this community. Daniel was a man who realized his place. And he wanted to influence the culture for the kingdom. In the next chapter, there is a title. I believe it's chapter 13. And the title is called, Connecting Before Correcting. Say that with me. Connecting before correcting. Now this is what Daniel did. Daniel didn't go to Babylon and rebuke everybody. Daniel was a man who prayed. Daniel was a man who served. And he was able to influence those five kings. God has not called the church to win arguments. God has called us to influence our culture for the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, when he was ministering, There were times that he rebuked the Pharisees, but there were also times when people needed him. He met them where they were. He went to their house. He went to a well. There was a Samaritan woman, and he went to the place where she drew water. There was a man by the name of Zacchaeus who was interested in Jesus, and Jesus went to his house and ministered to him there. I'm glad for a Jesus that comes where you are. How many are thankful for that today? The Bible says that all of us, that we are to be wise in the way that we act toward outsiders and make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be seasoned with salt and full of grace so that you may know how to answer. We need to know how to answer everyone about the hope that lies within us. J.S. Knox said this, You cannot antagonize and influence at the same time. If you are going to reach people for Jesus, you don't come with hate in your heart. You don't come with an attitude of, I'm going to straighten them out. The Holy Spirit can straighten them out. You just be a vessel for Jesus. Now, you do need to tell them the truth, but God will give you an opportunity to do that. I believe that 1 Peter 3.15 tells us that we've got to be prepared. Now, the example that I want to give to you today is an example that I think is important for you to understand. In the last six months or so, I'm thankful for a group of dedicated servants that are in our community. I'm thankful for these first responders who come to homes They go to places where they do not know what they are going to find. They go to places where there has been violence prior to them coming and trying to help someone who'd been injured. They go to places where people are sick and there's disease and they may not know exactly everything that they may walk into. They go and they say, we're here to serve the public, we're here to help, and we're here to do whatever we can to preserve life. And I'm thankful for them today. And I just want to, in the midst of this message, I want to honor a man who spent, I think, 20, 25 years as the head of the EMS in Western Carter County. Kevin Hunter, would you stand? Where are you, sir? God bless you, my friend. Kevin told me that during COVID, the men would have to go into places. And 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 actually, he felt that sometimes they were putting their lives on the line so that they could minister to someone. I can tell you that about three, 
times, if not longer, EMS came to my house and they helped the situation. They didn't come in and state what was wrong. They came in and they wanted to help. What happened? We called and then they were dispatched. And I don't know what happened that day, but there must have been a lot of EMS in that area. Some of them were just in the neighborhood. I looked around and there were 10 EMS people in my living room. And I thought to myself, isn't that awesome? That when you call, somebody's there to help. I'm thankful for the fire uh, uh, people. The, those are firemen and fire women or fire persons. All right? I'm thankful for the police. I'm thankful for those who are public servants. And if you're involved, you're a volunteer fireman, you're involved in police, sheriff's department, whatever, I want you to stand, and I want to just let you know how much we appreciate you. If you are retired from those areas, I want you to stand. May God bless you. Thank 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 you very much. But the reason I want to talk with you today about the EMS is because there was a situation. There was an emergency situation. It happened on the Damascus Road. There was a man by the name of Saul, and Saul was a man who was going to persecute the church. And he came with letters from the Pharisees, and these letters basically said, you have the right to arrest these believers that are in Damascus, this sect, this group that has come apart from Judaism, those followers of Jesus in the way, Saul, you can arrest them and bring them back. It's interesting that Saul was a man who had to do whatever he would do to make sure they got back. He was a man who consented to the murder of Stephen, who was actually a martyr for the sake of Christ. He held the jackets of the individuals who were actually stoning Stephen when Stephen said, I see the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God the Father. Saul held those coats. Isn't it irony that... that This is included in the book of Acts. And now he's on his way to Damascus. He wants to get more. But all of a sudden, he sees a bright light from heaven. And the Lord speaks to him. And the Lord said to him, no, he just, he said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? These are, talking about red letters, these are the words of Jesus. How many of you know that we live in a world today where those are persecuting the cause of Christ? Saul asked, who are you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. Now get up and go to the city and it'll be told to you what you are to do. He goes to a house of justice on Straight Street. And all of a sudden, Ananias, a believer, a man who loves Jesus, a man who's been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, he gets a vision. And in that vision, the Lord speaks to him and says, I want you to get up and I want you to go to Straight Street. There's a man there and his name is Saul. And I want you to go and pray with him and minister to him. And and I'm going to share with him all the things that, that I'm going to do in his life. He's my chosen vessel. Wait a minute, Lord. This man is trouble. Wait a minute, Lord. This man has caused a lot of controversy. Wait a minute, Lord. I, I just, I'm not sure about this. A lot of people afraid of this man, Saul. But God said, go, exclamation mark. This is the man that I have chosen, and you're going to go lay hands on him, and you're going to anoint him, and God's going to do a great work there. Now, why am I sharing this with you today? Because I believe that the Lord wants to teach us something through first responder Ananias. Ananias was called by God and he went to the place where God had sent him, not knowing exactly what he would encounter, but he went. I submit to you today that God is looking for some people like Ananias. 
And I believe God is looking, point number one, for some EMS people, emergency ministry servants. Say that with me. Emergency ministry servants. And it's interesting that God is looking for people that he can use in this Babylonian culture just like he did for Daniel. And Ananias was a man, his name was, it means to be gracious and to show favor. That means regardless of where he went, he was going to carry with him the grace of God. He was going to show favor to the people that he ministered to. And I want you to know today that God is looking for people who are ready to hear and obey to restore those who are lost. There's too many fault finders, too many mudslingers, those who are interested in self. And there's some people even today that are looking at the wrong things. They're looking at guns and politics and they're looking at taking sides. But I want to tell you, believers, look at the root. We are looking at a culture who is living without Jesus Christ says their Lord and Savior today. That's where we're living. They're perishing. But Ananias means to be gracious and to show favor, to love and minister regardless of what has happened. We're going into the places where some people might be afraid to go. But God is going before us, and God is moving by His Spirit before us. I saw a video the other day of a man. These ring cameras, I know some of you got a ring camera, and, and I can tell when anybody comes to my house. Uh, and so when you come and bring a cake, I can say thank you very much. And that way, <laughs> bring one to Pastor Shad. He'd be happy too. But what I want you to understand is that there was this ring camera and a man went out of his door and his truck was parked at the end of the driveway. Wasn't a very long driveway. But the man tripped and bless his heart, he tripped and tried to regain his balance, but he hit his head on his new Ford truck and put a dent in it. And he was holding his knee, holding his head, and all of a sudden, his wife comes out of the house. And she used an expletive and says, What have you done? You have dented your truck. And I thought to myself, The man already knows what he has done. He needs somebody to help him to get up. What God is calling the church to do today God is calling the church today not to go and to criticize and tell them everything that they've done wrong. They already know that. They're in a mess. God is looking for people to say, I am here to help you up. There's a better way, and I want to show you what that way is. We're called to rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful. Aren't you glad that Jesus is merciful? Jesus will save. Let's move on to number two. God desires to raise up men and women, just like Ananias, who are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, pastor, don't be preaching about the Holy Spirit. Don't be preaching about the power of God. Don't be preaching about the gifts of God and and the power of God to set people free. People might not understand that. I'm going to tell you something. We need the power of the Holy Spirit in our churches more than we ever have. But God desires to raise up men and women like Ananias who are one filled with the Spirit and then they're sensitive to the Spirit. Ananias was in a place where he, he was able to minister to Saul, but he was also in a place where he was able to hear. I want to say this today, and I want to say it in love. Some of you have been saved, and some of you have been baptized in water, 
But you need to be filled to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. If these days, if you want to be used in power, you got to go further. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to fill you and guide you and supply you and minister to you. The scales need to fall off of some eyes, and some scales are not going to fall off unless you are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit in these days. There are scales of sin, scales of pain, scales of addiction, scales of sickness, scales of hate, scales of anger, scales of revenge, scales of pride, scales of hard-heartedness. But I want to tell you, when hands are laid on them and the Holy Spirit begins to work, only then will the scales fall off of those eyes. The church needs an infusion, an empowering of the baptism of the Holy Spirit once again so that God can use us in a powerful way. Hallelujah! Glory to God! Some of these scales need to fall off and I believe that God wants to speak to us. Some of you are, you are so, even after what happened last night, What should have happened was not for you to stay up all night and analyze what they said on different networks. You should have gotten on your knees and say, God, save and heal and bless and move and bring a mighty move of God to this land. Be filled with the Spirit. We need a cleansing and an infilling. And so that like Isaiah said, here am I, send me. I'm on an EMS. I want to be an emergency ministry servant. I want to move on with the Lord. I want to hear what the Lord has to say. Mike, where are you, brother? Pass that to me. I I noticed this on the belt of a lot of those EMS that would come in my house. And they had radios. They had something up here. And they were talking. Yeah, And they're all, they're talking. But you know what? That reminds me of how the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. Is the Holy Spirit saying, go in here today. Go there today. Last week, I I had to go check on some type of an appliance somewhere. And I went there. But you know what? I didn't necessarily wind up doing the thing about the appliance. I wound up ministering to a man. And I want to tell you that really needs to be your first priority. I know you're in the bank. I know you're in the grocery store. And I know you're on your job. But you are first a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God can use you wherever you are. Number three, and this is the final point. God is preparing courageous. Say courageous. Courageous emergency ministry servants for these crucial days. The souls of the world have some heavy issues. They've got some deep-seated problems. They've got some things that they need that only the Holy Spirit and people that are, are anointed by the Lord can take care of. They need three things. Number one, they need your presence. They need you to be there. I have shared this with, and Pastor Shad and I have talked about this, especially to our, our, our ministry team What happens here on Sunday morning is just a small part of what God has called you to do. What God does in your family is vital. You are there seven days a week and you need to know how to minister to your family. And so therefore, God is calling us to be there, to be present it may be a coworker, it may be a prodigal son or daughter. It may be at 1 a.m. Well, I don't like that when it happens at 1 a.m. Well, in these days, get ready. It may be at the lunch time hour. It may be an enemy like Saul. I'm going to say that again. It may be an enemy like Saul. God is going to put courage in the hearts of believers in these last days that they will even go to their enemies and they will minister to their needs. 
Somebody's got to have the courage enough to obey God. We're going to be people who forgive and stand there when they're forsaken. They, it may be in a doctor's office. It may be in a courtroom. It may be when trouble comes. It may be that you have to go and get somebody out of the bar. It may be that you have to help somebody and they, you say, well, there, a lot of people don't like them and, and there are people, they always cause trouble and they'll never change. Never say that. The Holy Spirit is able to transform every life if they will submit to Him. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe in this gospel today. So your presence is necessary. A young man was talking about his time in Fort Benning, Georgia. Have any of you served in there or been near Fort Benning, Georgia? There's one, God bless your heart, there's one over there. There's one right over there. These men were there for their basic training or there for their training. and, And the next morning they went there for the first time and they thought to themselves, we've heard that we're going to have to run 10 miles with that pack on our back. And the sergeant said, the first thing we're going to do, and those guys were dreading it, he said, you need to find a buddy. Find a buddy? What do you mean, find a buddy? Yeah, you need to find somebody because you're going to be stretched further than you've ever been stretched before. You're going to be stressed like you've never had before. But you're going to accomplish things that you've never thought that you would be able to do. But there's going to be somebody with you that's going to help you, hold you, encourage you, stand with you. And it may be that they have to carry you out of a field wounded one day. You better have your buddy today. We need to team up. I'm thankful for friends who love Jesus. How many are you thankful for friends who love Jesus today? Thank the Lord for them. Thank God for that. They not only need your presence, but they need your touch. Ananias was not afraid to put his hands on the meanest man in Damascus. And he put his hands on him. The same hands of Saul, isn't it ironic that these hands were actually going to probably take Ananias bound back to Jerusalem. But in the spirit realm, Paul's hands were bound by his own hate and by his own misunderstanding. But when Ananias laid his hands on him, those chains fell off of him. Your touch. And it's interesting that those same hands of Saul wrote half of the New Testament that you have today. Because of an EMS, somebody that said, I'll go. Somebody with the spirit of Isaiah that said, here am I, send me. Thirdly and finally, your words are important. The Bible talks about the words that were spoken here. Paul had several names, or Saul had several names. And if I were to ask you what was the next name that he was going to receive, what was Saul's name? What do you, what do you see in the New Testament? What was his name? That was actually his third name. His second name was not Saul. Saul. But brother Saul. Are you getting what I'm saying to you today? I want you to know that Ananias knew that God had done something for him and he called him brother Saul. I know that Saul was blinded. I know that he was wondering what's going to happen to me. And he was alone. He hadn't eaten for three days and and he was hungry and he was concerned what was going to happen to his life. But somebody touched him and loved him and said brother Saul. The world needs us to love them and to touch them. Sometimes people think the church is a place where people are distant. But the church must be in the marketplace today. How many of you are with me? Can you say amen to that today? we got to be where the people are. Got to be where the needs are. 
R.C. Sproul talked about a young man who had cerebral palsy. He was in one of his classes. And he said that this young man was very bright and capable. And one day he came with a problem that he had. And he said, would you pray for me, Professor Sproul? And Professor Sproul basically went to that wheelchair where he was. And he said, Lord, help this man. Guide him. He put his hand on his shoulder and he said, help him, Lord. Help this man. And when he got through praying, he looked and the young man was weeping tears. And he, and he said, what, what's happened? He said, I want you to know something. I have been ridiculed because of what my disease is. And, and I've been belittled and I felt belittled. But you're the first person to ever call me a man. I want you to know that we put labels on people. We put labels on people. We call them sinners. We call them heathens. We call them outcasts. We call them outliers. We call them Democrats. We call them Republicans. We call them independents. We call them all types of labels. We call them people who are foreign to us. We call them people, and I could go on a lot of names and you might not like them, but I want you to know first and foremost, they are a person that God wants to know His glory and He wants to save them and redeem them. And I'm thankful today that he was accepted. I'm thankful today that what happened in that room, in that house on Straight Street, I want you to know it changed the world. When I think of the life of the Apostle Paul, And all that God did for him, think about how your life has been impacted by the ministry of the Apostle Paul. I wrote a few of these things down. I'm, as Pastor Shaz says, I'm getting ready to go to my seat. I want you to understand what has happened here. In this passage of Scripture, Brother Saul, he went to Arabia for three years. He then was accepted by the disciples. There was another EMS worker by the name of Barnabas who helped him along the way. There was another EMS worker by the name of Luke who went with him on some of his missionary journeys. Another EMS worker by the name of Silas that went with him. Another EMS worker by the name of Barnabas. I'm glad that Paul was able to plant churches and minister in so many different places. In Crete, in Philippi, in Ephesus, in Corinth, in Thessalonica. And we've got all of the record here. But I'm glad that Paul wrote these words in 1 Corinthians 13. Love keeps no record of wrong. There have been a lot of marriages that have been saved as a result of that. I'm glad that Paul wrote in Romans 12 1, I can be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I'm glad that Paul wrote that there's a peace that passes all understanding. I mean, you're glad that that peace has calmed your anxious heart today. I'm glad that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love the Lord, the call according to His purpose. I'm thankful that Paul wrote that. I'm glad that Paul wrote, Therefore now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. I'm glad that Paul wrote that the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven and He shall descend with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. After that, we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we will always be with the Lord. I'm glad the Apostle Paul wrote these things to encourage me, to lift me up and to help me. I'm thankful that God rescued a man who was hateful, a man who was a sinner, a man who had no hope and today you and I are better because of what God did on a Damascus road. If you're thankful for that, give God praise in this house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I'm also going to tell you this. It would not have happened unless a man heard from God, an EMS worker, an emergency ministry servant, 
named Ananias. And he said, I'll go. I don't know exactly what I'm going to face, but I'm going to be there. And God worked a miracle. I prophesy to you today that there are Ananiases in this congregation. And you, as the Lord tarries, I don't know what we may face before the coming of the Lord, but I'm telling you today that the Lord is going to raise up some people who are going to go into some difficult places, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to be on them, and some scales are going to fall off some eyes, and some people are going to be delivered because they're willing to be used by Jesus. I want you to stand with me. Can you do that today? You're being commissioned today. You're being commissioned to go into different places. I could have Kevin and others to come up and they could share for many hours of what they've encountered when they went into some of those places. But I'm thankful for the EMS because they came with the spirit of life. And they wanted to bring life. You're going to bring life. Some of you are going to do things you didn't think would be possible. But the spirit of God is going to anoint you. Here's what I'm going to ask today. I want every VBS worker who's going to work in this VBS, I want you to be the first ones to come. We're going to have some prayer. And we're going to pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be upon you. I, how many of you want to know that there are some kids that need their eyes open in this world today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Shad, join me on the platform if you would, my brother. Oh, man, they're still coming. They're coming down this aisle. They're coming. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's my partner. Bill Bartz. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a class with Bill Bartz. We, we, have, we have been teamed up f- for the last two or three years. Sometimes <clears throat> Bill can say things and get away with it. Not ugly now, I'm just saying. <laughs> but he can look at those children and say, if you don't straighten up, I'll throw you on the ground and you'll be hard for you to get up. <laughs> and they're like, yes, sir. And then I'll come say, it's all right, darling. It's all right, baby. (laughs) I want to thank God for all of these. Now, I want to, here's another part of this this altar call today. There's some of you in this room, and you know you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You got a negative attitude. You got stuff. You got things you've been holding on to. And the Holy Spirit is saying to you that you got to let it go and get filled with the power of the Holy Spirit if you're going to be used today. And we're going to wait about 30 more seconds, and I need some of you to come. I, I got some stuff happening in my life. I need God's power released in my life. And I need that today. Anybody else, you want to come? I need the power of God released in my life. I need God's power. Amen. Several are coming. I need the power of the Holy Spirit working and moving in my life. Some of you have come to Jesus, but you've not had the Spirit of God released in your life. I want to tell you, if you're going to be used in these days, if you want to have discernment, if you want, the God, if you want God to give you discernment and the gifts of the Spirit to be used in your life, you need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. How many of you believe what I'm talking about today? You know what I'm saying to you today. Yes. Amen. Several more are coming. Here's what we're going to do. Pastor Shad, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer. I want you to do this. I want you to take your hands and put them over your eyes. In fact, I want us all to do that. And our prayer is going to be, Lord, remove the scales from my eyes so that I can remove the scales from other eyes and that the Holy Spirit will be used in my life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Shad, would you lead us in this prayer today? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
for using Pastor Tim this morning. What a powerful message in you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, the power and the anointing of thine Holy Ghost that removes scales from eyes. Lord, that we won't see in the natural, but yet see in the Spirit. For many need to be saved. Many need to be delivered. And many need to be forgiven. Lord, use these VBS volunteers beyond the best of their ability to touch countless young people that shall come on the week of Vacation Bible School. That it will be powerful. That it will be anointed. That many are coming to be healed and delivered and made free in you. We thank you for that right now. Remove the scales. Those scales from my eyes. You know what they are. Remove them right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. And send dunamis power in this place. Because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the great things that God has prepared for us because we love him. Then we thank you, Lord. Our scales are now removed. We thank you, Lord, and we give you glory in this place. Where two or three are gathered together in your name, touching and agreeing, you shall be in the midst. We give you glory. Raise your hands. Put your hands together and tell the Lord, thank you for all that he's done. In Jesus' name, hallelujah and amen. All right, before you leave, I already know that you are going to hear conversations tomorrow. Why don't you go in your prayer closet and begin to pray and ask Jesus to take some scales off of some eyes and let's believe God for a move of His Spirit. Go with God and He will go with you. Amen. Have an awesome day. Amen. Amen.